out an yeah, opportunity. Right. Yeah, I should have had what? a few more tries, actually. I'm going to move you onto the wing now, because <laughs> yeah. we've got a couple of special guests who are coming in there. You guys okay. shift over. Let's All bring right. in Richie Moanga and Joe Moody. Where are they? Well, they're wandering. Here they are. They're wandering the strip. There they are. In Christchurch. Here it is. Riverside Market. <laughs> Champion Crusaders. Here they go. Welcome, lads. Thanks for All having good. us. Thank you. Joe, welcome, welcome. Right. Evening. Yeah, um, uh, recovery day today after yesterday. Do they still do that? And what did you do? Uh, yes, we still do recovery days. We're supposed to do some active recovery, get the legs spinning, uh, do a little bit of a so, light, light So you're just supposed to. Did you not? <laughs> <coughs> I, was, I was busy um, <laughs> doing, doing a wee uh, pool session and um, just a light flush on the bike, yeah. Oh, so you're not doing squats? No, I thought no, that not, was not a, Owen Frank's, the, just the rule, is the, when you're one of the front rowers here, that's where you're straight to the gym. Oh, not, not the gate, uh, day straight after a game, no. Richie, for you? Yeah, I spent myself uh, active recovery, um, wondering after, looking after my, my daughter, Billy. She keeps me on my toes, so nice. yeah, it's good recovery. Well, you active recovery well, today, recovery. Yeah, your recovery. <laughs> yeah, no, my recovery was uh, a little stroll around Hagley Park, actually. Oh, That's nice. what I did. Absolutely. Just turning back so, the clock. So were you actually running? You, you could call it running. <laughs> That's what I said, you're yeah, strolling. You could call you're it strolling. running. Yes. Oh, look, how, how great, guys. I'll start with you, Joe. Um, great to be back at home in front of the crowd uh, Sunday afternoon. I mean, this sort of contest, take nothing for granted, this competition doesn't get any easier. Dead right. And, uh, yeah, like you said, afternoon footy and at home doesn't get any better. So uh, those local derby matches, they're always pretty tough as well. But, uh, yeah, it's a great way to sort of kick the season off, I suppose. Yeah, Richie, just... Seems to be you seem to be really, really comfortable driving the football team around. I know that um, you know in the past people talk about how hard it is for a younger first five coming through, but you seem to be getting more and more comfortable. Are you feeling really good about that now? Yeah, it's something I've worked on the last couple of years, but um, big boys like Joe make it easier for me to do so. We play right. It's tough, and of course when you go out there and. and Ben O'Keefe was on the show last week and he's talking about the incident in Dunedin where you possibly could have got a yellow card. I mean, how hard is that when you've got to balance the fact you're playing a game which is physical and it gets a bit niggly? Yeah, they do a lot of work with us in our mental skills over, you know, when you get that red haze come over you and the steam coming out the ears and how you're supposed to deal with that and everything. But, uh, yeah, obviously I just had that moment where I couldn't quite get myself back into what they call the blue. I was in the red and, uh, yeah... Uh, I was probably fortunate, uh, like you said, not, not to get anything for it, so, yeah. Well, I, I actually, obviously, myself personally, don't know anything about the Red Mist. <laughs> such a disciplined player back in my day, Joe. But uh, what I was really impressed with was your discipline, because you managed to get into that slight scuffle without closing your fist and uh, did it with an open hand. That was incredibly uh, resilient of you to not actually really fall into the deep, dark uh, depth Red. of the mist. Yeah, no, I'm proud is that, of myself. Is that a technique that you've used on a few backs that piss you off at training? Or? Uh, yeah, normally they get it across the back of the head. Rich has probably had a couple of those. but um... Hence the mullet. I've sort of protected the back of my head because Moody goes around and gives everyone that one. So, no, it's good. Outstanding, outstanding. Let's go to Bernie and get some questions from the crowd. I'm looking forward to this because your fans, they're, they're never too... Oh, they're always kind to you guys. What do you got, Bern? Look, this is Hunter. He's 10 years old from Christchurch. And what club do you play for, Hunter? I play for New Brighton. And you're such a, a rugby fan. You've seen a few games in the last few weeks. Where have you travelled? I've, I've gone to Dunedin and the one that was played yesterday. And it was specifically to watch to Canterbury? Yeah, yeah, um, yeah. True red and black fan there. And you've got a question for one of the team. What's your question? Who's it for? Um, my question is for Joe Meady. And what um, what did the player that you punched, what did he do to you to make him punch you? I mean, <laughs> <laughs> only the tough questions, Joe. Uh, <laughs> great question, mate. Um, <laughs> Firstly, I'd just like to establish, I didn't punch him. Um, I had my hand open and uh, what he did was um, he pulled me out of the mall and was holding me out. So I was just, I was just trying to push him away. And yeah. yeah, that's what it was. Do you accept that? Yeah. yeah you don't want to refer up, TMO that one? Yeah, did you say sorry? <laughs> <laughs> Hell no. <laughs> Good on you, he's, a, he's an islander. <laughs> hey, 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 buddy. Oh. 
Very red and black. Careful through and through down very here. Red and black. Right, so we've also got a viewer question. We love to get your feedback. Email us at thebreakdown.co.nz and we'll get questions going. So this week, uh, Arjun has got a question for Richie Mwanga. He's saying, Richie, do you prefer the two pivot game like the All Blacks tried in the Rugby World Cup or the one pivot role you play in the Crusaders with the options of other players stepping in when they see the opportunity? Oh, what do you reckon, Richie? That's a tough question. I think um, as long as I'm on the field, it doesn't matter. Um, <laughs> so uh, run us through, though, how it feels different. Is it, is it, is it significantly different? I, I don't think so. I think um, to be a world-class fullback these days, you've got to be skilled and, and you're in the uh, position of first receiver a lot. Uh, you look at all across the Super Rugby teams in New Zealand and, and they're at first receiver. Um, it just seems to be when there's a fullback that's also a first five, the, these sort of questions come up, but it doesn't make a difference, really. Moose, do you know what he's talking about? Yeah, if I were to chime in on this a little, um, <laughs> what people probably don't realise was at that World Cup, it wasn't just the two pivots, we actually played with three. Yeah, but Because right. um, I'd told Rich that I'd step in for him at any point <laughs> if he was getting a bit puffed or tired or anything. And I just never had to actually come into that first receiver role. But So if it had gone to you earlier in the tournament, maybe, do you think of a different outcome? Uh, we can only speculate. But, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely love it. Absolutely and your love kicking it. game moods, obviously, is something you've been working on recently. Is that why you'd like to be the third pivot? I generally tried not to kick too much. I like just the hit em ups and uh, that sort of carry on, but if I have to, I would back myself, yeah. Uh, Richie, I want to ask you the fact that the game continues to change, and particularly over the last 18 months, what everyone across the globe is dealing with, with Kendra's having to deal with the fact that you're postponing a Rugby World Cup. What have you guys, do you think, learnt from that, from week to week, the fact we had the change kickoff this last weekend from a Saturday to a Sunday? I think more than anything, it's taught us that we've got to adapt really well um, and expect anything. Um, you know, like you said, the change in the time of the game and the date um, caught us off guard a little bit, but we just had to adapt to that. And um, we've seen the last over the last year, we've had to adapt to many things. So I think the team that can adapt the most, and we've had to adapt to rule changes and and tempo of the game and all sorts. So I think that's one of the main things. Do you make you think yourself you're better for it, Joe? For the fact that you've had to go through that, those changes. I'm not sure, too sure what to tell you on that one at the moment, sorry. I'm still sort of feeling them out a little bit. And in all honesty, I haven't actually felt too much of a significant change uh, in what I'm doing out there. So The scrums, um, the scrums, the line-outs, the line-out. Yeah, exactly. I think every other team in this competition wants to know how long you guys spend on your line-out drive defence five metres from your line. <laughs> because it's insanely good. And the speculation whether or not the try that was scored on the weekend from Ricky Riccitelli technically could be uh, you've conceded a try. Are you guys counting that one as one against the head? Uh, I think if you go to the technicalities of it, which we don't want to, you know, get to the nitty gritties, but um, it probably doesn't count as a mall try because he peeled off and went by himself. So... I don't know. You're saying no another So you're blaming the backs, the blame like the... He's blaming me. Yeah, yeah I was the one there. Should have, should have <laughs> Come on, Richie. I was too so concerned about trying to stop them all and left the, left the gap there, but, yeah. yeah Moody's but really had a word to me, yeah. yeah. But do, you, do you love that challenge, that part of the game, when you know it's coming? Yeah, that's, uh, it's honestly, it's an awesome part of the game. As soon as it comes down into that five-metre ch uh, channel or whatever, we, uh, the whole pack just bars up. We know that it's game on. We know everyone wants a bar of it, and, uh, yeah, it's just time to go go to work. Hey, uh, fantastic answers. Great to have you with us here at Riverside, Mark. Thanks for coming down. Enjoy yourselves. If you had to pick a restaurant, you guys, quickly, which one would it be? Uh, if you like fried chicken, I think it's pretty tough to go past Empire Chicken. For you? I think, yeah, if you're looking for something classy, Amazon Eater or Crockett, definitely up there. Nice, Nike. Thank you so very, very much. So much of what you talked about tonight comes down to coaching. What we do know in New Zealand is the women's game continues to grow. And in Wellington, it's a great initiative from then. A coaching clinic, specifically coaching the women's game. Is it different coaching men or women? Well, actually, it's just about creating positive environments no matter who we have, because uh, we want to keep them in the game. So I think there's a lot of stuff that we can transfer across um, to our men's sides as well. So whether they end up coaching a women's side or not, they're going to be able to take that learning forward, so that's cool. Coming to a coaching course today is, is great to connect with the people who are actually doing all the mahi. Being able to have a conversation with them around 
what they find challenging, what they love about it, um, because it's all voluntary. And they, they're really setting the scene for what the future holds for the, for the game. So they've got a massive influence. So spending that time with them is really great to be able to connect and understand and hear from them really is, is important to me. Show me your hands, because that's what we want to see. Show me the shape of the hands, because that's what we want to see too. And let's move those hands around. So as your partner, you want to be throwing them, not always beautiful passes, because you're not always going to get those on the field. The stronger we build our networks around the country, the more we can learn from each other, take the stuff that's working well, copy and paste it, man. Give it to everybody to be able to lift it up. That's why today is important. It's about looking at that next step. Where is it that we can go so we can keep involved in the game? Don't have to be on the field to be involved in rugby. So let's make sure that there's those opportunities for us. Courses like this are critical for making the women's game better. We don't have enough female coaches coaching in the women's game. You know, hopefully they get some, of the, some confidence out of this. It's massive that, that they are better because they develop our players. So, you know, it's critical for us that they coach well and so hopefully they, they leave here with some ideas on how to make training fun and, you know, get quite detailed about things so people are learning but, but also enjoying themselves. The better we can get our coaches to be, the more, the more players are going to be feeling safe, have an enjoyable time, love the game, grow the game and, and hopefully they'll just filter up to having more quality players for the Black Ferns eventually.